Daniel will start us off. All right. Good morning and welcome to our first live Zoom Christmas service. Uh, my name is Daniel, one of the servants here at Hope Church, and I want to thank you for joining us this morning for our worship service. And for this time, uh, we begin with the call to worship, which comes from Psalm 98. And in it, the psalmist celebrates God's work of salvation. And you know, it's no mystery that this is a time of unparalleled struggle, especially in the pandemic, where Our current circumstances may be filled with burdens, our future hopes accompany with uncertainties, but this fact remains that God has worked a marvelous thing in history to give us a solid foundation for our faith, for trust, and for joy. It's not in our earthly circumstances, but in his son, Jesus Christ, we find a secure source of celebration for he has come, he has won, and he has redeemed us. And so redeemed people of God, Would you receive the word of our God coming from Psalm 98, verse 1 through 3, and let us respond with great joy and praise. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Would you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are gathered by your word this morning, acknowledging that it is your marvelous work of salvation which brings us near. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your son whom you sent to bring us a cure and everlasting joy, our wonderful counselor, our prince of peace. For through him, we have peace with you to be called your beloved sons and daughters, whom you will not abandon nor forsake. So God, would you lift up our weary and tired hearts to look upon your steadfast love and faithfulness. And would our hearts in turn be filled and abound in joyous praise to you. And so in this time of praise, lead us, guide us, and receive all the honor and glory. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Hope Presbyterian Church. Let's sing to our King, for this is our Christmas uh, Sunday. So let's praise Him. Sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven, heaven and nature sing. The joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. The men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more the sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness, the wonders of his love, and of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Sing joy to the world one more time. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven, heaven.
Joyful, joyful. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, hoping to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of cloud away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, veil and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus, which the morning stars begin. Father, love is reigning over us. Brother, love binds men to men. Ever singing, march we onward. Victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward. With a triumph song of life.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to be the propitiation for our sins and that you might make your enemies into your sons and daughters, especially this season. We recognize that and we celebrate in that truth, O Lord. And as we have just sung, we will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but we will boast in Christ alone in this season. And help us to do that as we listen to your word preached about your Son's coming and how he came to save and seek the lost, O oh Lord. And may our hearts be rejuvenated by that truth uh, day in and day out, O oh Lord. Um, thank you so much for all that you have done for us in Jesus Christ, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we go into a time of confessing our sins, and for that we turn to Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Uh, which begins by saying, for the wages of sin is death. The Bible makes it very clear. Sin leads to death. And sin isn't just the brokenness that we see around us or the brokenness within us, but sin is a cosmic crime against the holy God and his holy law. And because we are now criminals under that law, we are liable to death. And so when we confess our sins, we confess that we are sinners that we have sinned against God and we continue to rebel against him. And also in confessing our sins, we confess that Christ is our only answer. And that's why we celebrate today. Our cosmic punishment finds full payment in Christ. And though we may sin because of our nature, we confess and find forgiveness in Christ as we are transformed in our nature to turn away from sin and to love our Savior. And so church, in light of Christ our Savior, through whom we receive God's gift of eternal life, let us take this time now to personally and silently confess our sins before him. Let's do that now. And if you have placed your trust in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, and have confessed your sins, then there is assurance of pardon, which comes from the rest of Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Holy and righteous Father, we thank you for Christ. We thank you that he despised not the cross for our salvation before our salvation, humbled himself in the form of a servant to live, to die, and to be resurrected for us. And we understand that our lives are still marked by our struggle with sin, but it is through his accomplishment and the Spirit's power that we can grow in trust and delight in you. And so continue to teach us what it means to live as a foreign people, a people who journey through this world, but who place their hope in the world to come, and what the gospel has accomplished and what the gospel promises. We pray for the preaching of your word this morning. Uh, we lift up Pastor Joe to you, that you would strengthen him and set your spirit upon him, that he may proclaim the good news, the gospel to us this morning with all conviction, with all might. Would his message magnify Christ and lead us to find our rest, our hope, and our life in our Savior who has come. And give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to receive your word of life. And through all seasons, both of rejoicing and in times where it doesn't seem, it's very hard to teach us to pray continually as we pray the Lord's Prayer, the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And so not only do we do confession of sin and assurance of pardon, but we also take time to confess what we believe in uh, using summaries of the Christian faith. And we've been going through the Heidelberg Catechism, and we've been considering how do we satisfy God's righteous judgment for our sin? Who can pay for us? And so we come now to have a question 14. And what I'll do is I'll ask the question. And would you at home or wherever you are, uh, recite the answer together in one voice? And so question 14, can any mere creature pay for us? No. In the first place, God will not punish another creature for the sin which man has committed. Furthermore, no mere creature can sustain the burden of God's eternal wrath against sin and deliver others from it. Amen. And now Pastor Joe will come up and deliver God's word from Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, with a sermon entitled, The Promised Son of God Came to Us. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hey, this is our Christmas service. And so before we begin, um, let's turn on our videos and unmute ourselves and let's wish one another a Merry Christmas. Everyone, please turn on your videos, unmute yourselves and let's wish one another a Merry Christmas. Let's do that. Let's see everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> So wonderful to see you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we have been on a uh, Christmas mini series. Uh, first, from Genesis 15, we learned that our promise keeping God would be sending us his son to take the covenant curses upon himself so that we would experience the covenant blessings, right? Then from Isaiah 52 to 53, we learn that the promised son would come as the suffering servant to take upon himself our sickness of sin to bring us healing. Finally, today, we learn that the promised son of God has come as a servant to bring us salvation and to enable us to participate in the joyful dance of self-giving. Uh, these three passages are probably unique in that, you know, they are not your typical Christmas Advent uh, messages, but they all point to Jesus Christ. And today we turn to Philippians 2, verses 1 through 11. Philippians 2, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> Hear now the word of God. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father, the word of God. Amen. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, today we celebrate the coming of the promised son. Thank you so much, Father God, that you keep your promises and you have sent your one only son, and he has, he has come as a baby laid in a manger. What wonder is this, oh God? Lord, as we come before you, 
to worship you on this Christmas Sunday. Lord, we pray that we, you would be exalted, that we would lift up the name of Jesus Christ in our praises. Lord, speak to us. Speak to us of the beauty of what your Son has done. And Lord, help us to participate in what Christ has done as well this Christmas and from now forward. We thank you and pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. It is arguably a dark Advent season because of the pandemic. But the good news of the coming of the promised Son of God shines even brighter in such darkness, doesn't it? I hope and pray that you will you have not lost. I hope and pray that you have not lost the wonder of the coming of the Son of God as a baby. I hope you're still marveling at the mystery of it all. I remember at the darkest moment in our lives when you know my, <laughs> my dad went bankrupt, he fled the country, my mom was in jail, we're living with our grandma, three of us, and I was involved in the uh, Christmas play at the church, local church. Wow, you know, in the midst of that darkness, I saw light. In the midst of that, you know, gloominess, I saw, I saw hope. I saw the wonder and the mystery of it all. And the light shone even in a kid whose faith was very, very, very weak. Augustine, in this poem written about 15 centuries ago, uh, try to capture the mystery of it all, the mystery of the incarnation. Listen to this. Maker of the sun, he is made under the sun. In the father he remains, from his mother he goes forth. Creator of heaven and earth, he was born on earth under heaven. Unspeakably wise, he is wisely speechless. Filling the world, he lies in a manger. Ruler of the stars, he nurses at his mother's bosom. He is both great in the nature of God and small in the form of a servant. Notice how Augustine ends with the phrase, he is both great in the nature of God and small in the form of a servant. That captures the wonder of today's message. The Son of God in majesty and splendor came to us in humility to sacrifice himself, to save you and me. And the joy we experience, especially during this season, comes from sharing or participating in Christ's self-giving. The main, main point of today's sermon is this. Because the promised Son of God came to give of himself for our salvation, we too can participate in the joyful dance of self-giving with the exalted Son. Let me repeat that. Because the promised Son of God came to give of himself for our salvation, we too can participate in the joyful dance of self-giving with the exalted Son. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about this in three parts. Incarnation of the Son, exaltation of the Son, and participation in the Son. Okay? C.S. Lewis uh, wrote in The Problem of Pain, this is what he wrote, in self-giving, if anywhere, we touch a rhythm not only of all creation, but of all being. For the eternal word also gives himself in sacrifice. And that not only on Calvary, for when he was crucified, he did that in the wild weather of his outlying provinces, which he had done at home in glory and gladness. What is it saying? It's saying Jesus, when he gave of himself, didn't just do it for the first time there. No, Jesus was giving of himself, it's saying, for all of eternity. From the, for, for, from the, let me start again. From before the foundation of the world, he surrendered begotten deity back to begotten deity in obedience. And as the son glorifies the father, so also the father glorifies the son. From the highest to the lowest, self exists to be abdicated. And by that abdication becomes more truly self to be there upon yet the more abdicated and so forever. You know what it's saying? It's saying the son 
submit it to the Father. The Father glorified the Son. There was this self-giving, honoring, self-giving, honoring, self-giving, exalting going on for all of creation and for us as his created beings. When we, when we humble ourselves, we become our true selves. This is not a law which we can escape, Lewis says. What is outside the self of outside the system of self-giving is simply and solely hell. That fierce imprisonment in the self. Self-giving is absolute reality for us. And he goes on to say, there is joy in the dance of self-giving. But it does not exist for the sake of joy. It does not even exist for the sake of good or of love. It is love himself and good himself and therefore happy. It does not exist for us, but we for it. There is this eternal dance of this joyful, eternal dance of self-giving going on. Are you part of that? The three persons of the Trinity have been in this joyful dance of self-giving. And, and in the Son, we are invited to join in this joyful dance of self-giving as well. Let's talk about the first point, incarnation of the Son. By incarnation, we are talking about God coming as a human being. Jesus is God, the second person of the Trinity. When verse 6 says he was in the form of God, the word form describes not only nature or essence, but also the visible display of true identity. The pre-existent son had been clothed in the garments of divine majesty, splendor, and beauty. <laughs> I mean, we, we, it's hard to even imagine, right? Majesty, splendor, and beauty of Jesus before he came down. Jesus came from the heights of heaven and he condescended and was born a baby laid in a manger of all places. Think about that, the wonder of that. Jesus' condescension did not stop there. Jesus emptied himself of his beauty, majesty, and came in the form of a servant, it says. A contrast is being made here between the form of God and the form of a servant. Christ came from the height of power and splendor and down to the depths of weakness and lowliness proper for a slave. Isaiah had prophesied about the suffering servant, remember? In Isaiah 53, the suffering servant would heal God's people of their sickness of sin. And of this suffering servant, Isaiah wrote, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him. No beauty that we should desire him. He was despised, rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. <laughs> right? God of majesty, splendor and beauty came as an ordinary servant. Nothing much to look at. The best commentary on how he emptied himself is perhaps 2 Corinthians 8, 9, which says, though he was rich, yet for our sakes, he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. And in this form of a servant, Jesus didn't look like a servant. Jesus actually was a servant, and he served, because that is his essence, his nature. He was a servant. In Mark 10, 45, Jesus says of himself, for even the Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You see what is going on? Jesus is coming from the heights of heaven and is condescending, condescending, condescending. Jesus' condescension did not stop just at a humble service. Verse 9 tells us that he humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. In our text, Paul exhorts the Philippians to pursue unity through self-sacrificing humility. Here, our supreme example of humility is shown to be Jesus, our Lord. But it's more than just an example. Dr. Johnson, Dr. Dennis Johnson, writes, Paul's compact Greek still points to Jesus' self-sacrificing humility as an example to be emulated. But it also reminds us that the unbreakable cords of grace binds believers to our Savior so tightly that 
Christ conveys his mindset to us through the Holy Spirit, right? We're so tightly united with Christ that Christ conveys his mindset to us through the Holy Spirit. When Christ Jesus left the bliss of heaven for the miseries of earth for you, his purpose was not only to rescue you from your sins, desert, just a deserts, what we deserve. It was not only to set an example of humility, it was also to reconfigure the inclination of your heart so that his mindset would become your mindset. Remember what we said, because of sin, our, our hearts are curved in, bent in on ourselves. Jesus came to reconfigure that, reconfigure the inclination of your heart so that you, you would have a mindset of a humble, self-sacrificing servant. And so Jesus invites us into this dance of joyful self-giving. Jesus condescends and Jesus condescended to, to the lowest of low, to the abyss of death, but he was not left there. The Father God, God the Father, delighted to exalt the Son. And we come to our second point, exaltation of the Son. By exaltation, we are talking about raising high or lifting up of someone, right? The Father literally raised the Son from the dead, from the tomb. But the exaltation does not stop there, right? In our text, a dramatic turning point comes in verse 9. God the Father has exalted Christ to the highest place. So we saw the condescension of the Son, and we see the exaltation of the Son by the Father. God the Father has bestowed on the Son the name, that is, it says, above every name. God the Father is giving an exceptional honor to the Son. And it's beautiful to see. There is no competition here. There is no envy, rivalry. The son, son gives himself to the father. The father gives himself to the son. The son humbles himself and gives himself to us. And the father exalts the son. There is a dance of love, of self-giving, of lifting up, of exalting. God's love is and has been for all eternity perfect within the triune God. And we were created, my brothers and sisters, not so as to somehow fill a void, but, but to share this love of God. And then there's, this, there's an overflow of God's love within the triune Godhead. When it says that God has bestowed in him the name that is above every name, the name is likely to be the title Lord, Curios, that was conferred on Jesus at the time of his resurrection, signifying his supremacy over all as the glorified eternal God-man. Philippians, who were not Christians, Philippians who are not Christians, would have been a part of an imperial cult, cult which would have required them to say, Caesar is Lord, Caesar is Lord. God the Father says, Jesus is Lord. Caesar's kingdom is gone, but Jesus' kingdom continues to advance. And the exaltation continues. It says, when Jesus comes back, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth, under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is curious, Lord, to the glory of God the Father. What is going on? The Father delights to honor the Son for the Son's accomplishment of his redemptive mission. Isn't that beautiful? There is this dance going on. Jesus Christ condescended and the father continues to exalt and he will exalt him even more when Jesus comes back. Some will have to confess when Jesus comes back that he is Lord but for the unbelievers who, who confess at that time it would be too late to be saved. You would have no choice but to say Jesus is Lord because you, you could not deny that when Jesus comes back but it will be too late. So can I implore you, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your trust in him today. You need Christ. You need the Christ of Christmas. He is the gift, the most precious gift that you need. From the 
condescension and the exaltation of Jesus, I hope you will see the biblical principle of humbling oneself and being lifted up by God. As Jesus humbles himself more and more in self-giving, the Father exalts, exalts him more and more and more. Notice the therefore in verse 9. Jesus humbled himself in self-sacrificing service. Therefore, he says, therefore, God the Father highly exalted him. Do you remember what happened in the garden? The original sin consisted of Adam grasping for equality with God. Satan had tempted Adam by saying, you will be like God if you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And he was tempted and he fell into sin by taking that which God had forbidden him to take. Adam, as the representative head, the federal head of humanity, brought all mankind into a state of sin and misery. One of the ways in which the sin is made manifest is in how we have envy, rivalry, and how we have selfish ambition, how we have discord, disunity. However, salvation in Jesus is the opposite of what Adam did, isn't it? Jesus, instead of grasping for equality with God, that's the phrase in this text, grasping for equality with God, which was his and is his, Jesus instead humbled himself and gave of himself sacrificially so that we may be saved, right? Very opposite of Adam. Adam wanted to lift himself up. Jesus instead humbles himself. Jesus, our second Adam, our new federal head, lived the perfect life that we could never live and died the death we deserve to die. And in doing so, paid for our sins penalties. As Klein, Meredith Klein would say, Christ meritorious work as our last Adam fully satisfied the claims of divine law and justice. And through Jesus, we have our salvation. Furthermore, our salvation involves humbling ourselves of our pride and submitting ourselves to what Christ has done and putting our trust in his finished work on the cross, right? Why are people not able to, to put their trust in Christ? Because of their pride because they can't humble themselves. But when through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able, enabled to humble ourselves, then the Father delights to lift us up from the abyss of death, abyss of hell, into the heavenly circle of love with our triune God, to enjoy this love of God, to enjoy the joy of self-giving. And the dance of self-giving starts for you then. And so instead of envy, rivalry, and selfish ambition, discord and this unity we are enabled to give of ourselves in humble self-sacrifice there's a famous christmas truth of 1914 during world war one I, I read an article that i asked how bitter enemies were able to find peace even for a day do you know what happened on christmas morning soldiers from both sides of the battle the brits and the germans put up signs that read, Merry Christmas and Frolika Weihnachten. Men threw away their guns, put their hands up in the air and came to the no man's land. They shook hands. Then the soldiers were holding joint burial services for the dead. They began sharing their goods. British soldiers had been given holiday uh, tins of plum pudding from the king. German soldiers had received pipes with a picture of the crown prince on them. And before long, the men were bartering these holidays gifts that celebrated the enemy's royals. There were even soccer matches at various locations played with imp improvised balls. Eventually, soldiers prayed and caroled together, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. You know what that is, right? Silent night, holy night. Shared dinner and exchanged gifts. What enabled them to do this? The article came up with various answers. But my answer is this, it's Christ's incarnation and exaltation. Christ enables us to participate in this joyful dance of giving of ourselves. We are loved by God and we are enabled to love one another. We are enabled to participate in the Son in the joyful dance of self-giving. Let's go to our final point. 
Final point is participation in the Son. The main imperative of our text is in verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Right? Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. The emphasis is on in Christ Jesus, in our union with Christ, in the fact that Christ is in you and you are in Christ. You are united to him. And the Holy Spirit who resides in you is working to make you more and more like Christ. Think, it is saying among yourselves as it is necessary to think in view of your corporate union with Christ. Another way to say that is adopt then this frame of mind in your community, which is indeed proper for those who are in Christ. Paul's argument is since we are united to Christ, we should have this mindset of humble, self-sacrificial service. John Stott in Basic Christianity says that if you read the Bible, if you see nobody who ever met Jesus Christ ever had a moderate reaction to him. There are only three reactions to Jesus, he says. They, are, they either hated him and tried to kill him, they were afraid of him and tried to run away, or they absolutely were smitten with him and they tried to give their whole lives to him. But nobody ever had a moderate reaction to him. My brothers and sisters, let me ask you, are you good at dancing? <laughs> are you dancing right now in this joyful dance of self-giving? If we are united with him, the Bible says, then that's who we are, right? And that's what we should be participating in. Right? In, our, in our union with Christ, we participate in Christ's servanthood, right? We participate in who Christ is and what he does. Christ's work for us necessarily leads to Christ's work in us that expresses Christ. This is what one writer wrote. Christ lives in us, the Christian. The same Jesus who showed us what it means to be humble, obedient servants before God. And through the Holy Spirit, we participate in who Christ is. And one, as one united with Christ, we participate in the Spirit, Spirit's ongoing work of bearing witness to Christ. And one important aspect of that is participating in this dance, this joyful dance of humble, self-sacrificial service. Remember what Christ has done for all of eternity. He gave of himself. And we are to find ourselves this Christmas in giving of ourselves. Self-giving is paradoxically the way you find freedom and joy. Let, let me say this. This is how you find joy. John 12, 24 says this. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. How can we rejoice in fruitful harvest when we give of ourselves? We see this principle in marriage. Unless you give of yourselves in humble, self-sacrificial service, <laughs> you don't find true joy in marriage, right? If you're always holding back, if you're always thinking, oh, that person has to you know, give me joy, make me happy, guess what? That's a recipe be for disaster in a marriage, right? It is when you give of yourselves, you'll find true joy <laughs> in marriage. The son of God gave himself to us in incarnation, humiliation, and in death so that we may be enabled to give ourselves to one another. See, the son who gave of himself and surrendered himself is your Lord, right? He is the one who surrendered himself, gave himself, is your Lord, and is, is inviting you to surrender yourself to the Son. And when you give yourself to the Son, you truly find yourself because you were created in God's image. Self-giving is part of who we are as redeemed people. And when you surrender yourself to the Son, you will find, you'll finally see that you were created to have a loving relationship with the Son who gives of himself. Of, <laughs> to you and to the other two, two persons of the Trinity and we get to experience this dance of joy self-abdication is the way to self-fulfillment
And when you truly find yourself in Christ, then you will find joy in giving of yourself to others. Let me quickly use uh, you know, several illustrations here. And you know, let me give you some ways you can apply this to our, uh, our life together, our lives together. Let's talk about koinonia groups for a moment. Uh, we are, we're in the midst of our koinonia groups, but you know, think about your thought process. Some of you who didn't join in the koinonia groups, some of you might have said, oh, okay, I, I'm all good, I'm fine. Okay, so I don't need to be part of a koinonia group, right? But the fact of the matter is you may be okay, but others may not be, right? By you being part of the community and giving of yourselves to the community, right? Out of your very busy schedule, you help other brothers grow. And what happens is when you, when you see others grow by your giving of yourself, right? Then there's multiplication of joy, right? That's what's supposed to happen in our corner new groups. You know, what I'm praying for is that, you know, in the new year, more and more people would join, right? And we are, we're going to have a renewed challenge for people to join in the new year to, to give of themselves to experience joy like never before, right? We're going to have a Christmas party this afternoon. Some of you say, ah, I'm okay. I'm fine. You know, um, we had yeah Christmas party uh, Friday and we have, you know, tag Christmas party today. Some of you, again, might be saying, I'm good. Praise God, I'm good. But again, it's not about you, right? It's about how can I give of myself so that others will, well, others will be made better, right? Others may experience love of Christ. And in so doing, guess what? There's joy. Let me end with a final application and a story. You know, this Christmas um, season, my wife had been, excuse me for talking about my wife. And I don't know if you know me, I, you know, I talk a lot about my wife, but it, it just, you know, I am locked in this house with my wife and she's the person I see the most. And, you know, I see so much joy in my wife. And, you know, this morning I was thinking, Again, why? why? Why is my wife so joyful? And, and my answer to that is because she loves to give, right, of, of herself. Right? And, you know, before our outdoor worship service, she was drawing all these, you know, Christmas, drawing on these all uh, Christmas ornaments to give to people. She, she spent hours, days uh, to, to do that. And, and then she was baking all kinds of things to give to the people, right? And one night she was saying, oh, you know, my, uh, my head hurts. She woke up in the middle of the night. She was, uh, her head was hurting. And the next day she was like, what if I have the, co- uh, what if I have COVID? <laughs> and I said to her, darling, you don't have COVID. It's just that you've been drawing like this, bent, you know, with your uh, head bent over and, uh, you know, drawing all those ornaments, right? But you know what? As we were giving them away, Man, there was so much joy being shared, right? Joy comes not by trying to hoard things for yourself. Joy comes as we give of ourselves, as we participate in this dance of joyful self-giving. Let me ask you, are you good at this dance? <laughs> I'm, I'm a terrible dancer, and you know what? Uh, I, I need to learn to give of myself too, because I'm very, very selfish at heart. But let's, let's go to the Lord this Christmas. Let's look at uh, the incarnation of Jesus Christ, the exaltation of Jesus. See the dance of self-giving going on within the triune Godhead. And let's join in and participate. Amen. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who came, Father, humbly, self-sacrificially to save us from our sin. And Father God, who has come to enable us to join in in this joyful dance of self-giving. Father, Help us to realize that there is real joy in giving of ourselves. That real joy is found in self-giving this Christmas. Help us to find 
first and foremost, that joy in you, in, in the Son. I pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ, who are joining us for this Christmas service. Lord, help them to see <laughs> the wonder of what Christ has done. Help them to experience the love, the joy, too, in the self-giving of the Son and in, Father God, us joining in this circle of dance. Father, I pray for brothers and sisters who, who profess faith in you. As we profess our faith in Jesus Christ, Lord, may we be participating in this dance of joy. Thank you. Praise you. We love you, Father. We, we exalt you. And pray all these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Now let's let's sing joy to the world. Joy to the world. <clears throat> joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare in room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven heaven and nature sing joy to the earth the savior reigns men their songs employ while fields and floods rocks hills and plains repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy Repeat the sound in joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, no thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. world of truth and grace and makes nations prove the glories of his righteousness the wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love And now we will continue our worship with a time of offering. Uh, you can go online and give at hopepcsd.org slash give. Uh, just two quick reminders. First of all, that as we are celebrating today as our Christmas service, if you do so feel inclined, uh, please do consider giving out of joy and participation um, to, yeah, to really join in and to continue to use these funds as a way to serve this church, uh, to give, and to also rejoice together with the community. And secondly, for those who are struggling, we do still have our Coronavirus Mercy Fund. You can contact our deacons and uh, they will continue, they will give you more information on how you can receive funds. We do wanna help you at this time, so please do not hesitate to let us know. Um, that's it for offering. And now our elder Jim will come up and pray for the offering. Let's pray. Father, we give uh, tithes and offerings, and grateful heart, for all things come from you. Uh, you have blessed us so abundantly. Uh, may we be good stores of offerings and in honor of God, how we use it, Lord. Uh, but most of all, we give thanks for sending your only son, Jesus Christ, who brought us joy, peace, and hope of the world as we celebrate his birthday. For he, for he has come to the world for the poor and the sick and outcast and sinners like us to give hope of salvation to those who believe in him. And we also pray for our missionaries, Damien and Youngmi in Japan. We'll give them protection both physically and spiritually so that they can carry on the mission work that you have called. 
May God open hearts of Japanese people so when they hear the gospel, they may know who Jesus is, the Savior of the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. And pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Jen. Now it's time for announcements. Uh, we want to welcome those of you who are joining us uh, for the first time. Welcome to Hope Church. If you are visiting us for the first time, we want to encourage you to go to our website, hopepcsd.org, and click on um, connect with us and fill out a form. And then our welcoming committee uh, member will reach out to you and explain more of our church. And we, want, we really want to thank you for joining us today for our uh, Christmas service. And we want you to continue to worship God with us. And once again, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. You know, it's interesting because uh, a lot of the cards that I received this year had the joy theme in, in, in many, uh, it's very interesting in the midst of the pandemic. And I think perhaps the reason is because we really long for that joy. And you know what, in the midst of this pandemic, the joy comes as we participate in the dance of self-giving, right? Uh, it's an interesting biblical concept. So let's give of ourselves this Christmas and find joy in Christ. Okay, next. For your edification, uh, we have what we call reflection time after the service. Uh, there's a link at our website. Please join us for our reflection groups where we talk about what we just read so that we can grow in, uh, in our understanding of Christ so we can grow to really be part of this dance of self-giving, okay? So <clears throat> please join uh, us in our reflection time. There's a link in the chat as well. Next. <clears throat> Continue to worship with us online. Um, because of the, the pandemic, we are continuing to try to do this cautiously and trying to do this um, also in a way that keeps each other accountable and that's this is the happy place where we found ourselves and with zoom live worship well live worship via zoom uh, and so i want to encourage you guys to keep on worshiping god with us next and then there's a also youth service after youth sermon after this at 11 o'clock next and then uh, after that 11 30 there is a special christmas presentation today at uh, 11 30 uh, for those of you in the reflection around 11 50 or so i was told that there will be this special presentation so you can join in on the spark uh, live worship can i ask uh yeah can you put the sparks live uh, worship link on all our facebook uh, chats please that'll be great so for people who are not in the sparks uh, facebook group to join next um much thanks to all who participated in the congregational meeting. Thank you so much for caring for what goes on in our church. Next. Um, to celebrate Christmas together um, with the whole family, we are having a tag Christmas party, as I mentioned, at 3 p.m. today. This is for the adult group, okay? Um, if you're not familiar what that means, it's, it's uh, older singles and uh, married couples right? Uh, we want to encourage you guys to join us. You don't have to do this, but there will also be a white elephant uh, gifting. And the way that's going to work is you can purchase something online or, you know, buy a gift online and send uh, the, you know, e-gift card or something like that, but be creative, right? You can actually give a physical gift to somebody. And, you know, this is another way to connect with one another. So join us, but even if you have not bought anything, you don't have to participate in the white elephant gifting. Just join us and let's celebrate together uh, at 3 p.m. Next. Yeah, please join KG. I know this has been something we have had on for a long time uh, in the new year. Uh, I wanna encourage you guys to pray about joining a KG, right? Our, our, our small groups, right? Kononiyo groups. So if you have not joined or a small group, please uh, reach out to, to me, to the pastoral staff. Uh, there's a link for Cornelia groups as well. And we'll seek to accommodate, you know, what is community all about? It is about 
all of us giving of ourselves for each other, right? And we want to see this happen so that we would experience joy in Christ together. So we invite you to, to join a KG in the new year if you have not done so, okay? All right, let's all stand if you're able and we'll sing the doxology together. <clears throat> Ready? Here we go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And as I do the benediction, can I ask all of you to turn on your video so I could see your faces and deliver God's benediction to you? So glad you're joining us. Yeah, let's turn our videos. I like I love to see your faces. All right, let me peruse and see the faces. Give you time to turn it on. Yes, turn on your videos, please. All right. Okay, receive uh, the blessings from the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Shalom. Go in peace, everyone. Merry Christmas. Please join our Merry reflection Christmas. groups. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye.